Well, welcome everyone to our worship service this morning. We praise our Lord Jesus this wonderful day as he is the Lord of our hearts. Be thou my vision, O Lord. Shield and my sword for the fight. Be thou my dignity, be thou my might. Thou my soul's shelter, and thou my high tower. Praise thou be heavenward, O power of my power. Riches I Well, good morning and welcome to March 21st. You're at the 11 o'clock worship service for Nutrioso Bible Church. And if you would take your glow in the dark bulletin that Linda made this morning, and we'll go over a few announcements real quick. And let's see. Does everyone have a bulletin? I'm looking around. No. Lex? Would you see if there's some bulletins around the corner there, please, sir? No? We got them. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Anyone need one? Lex is holding a couple there. Tom, do you need a bulletin? He's got it. Okay. Good to see everyone. Are you glad to be here? Shake your heads, yes. The, this is looking better every single week. Every week this gets better. Let's uh, go over the first thing in the bulletin, the memorial service for our brother Dave Stuckey is fast approaching. That will be uh, Wednesday, March 31st, right here in the sanctuary uh, at 10.30 in the morning. So mark your calendars. You don't want to miss that. Um, his mom, Annette, and youngest brother, Mike, are coming from Hutchinson, Kansas, along with his uh, next oldest brother, Dan, who is in Pleasant Grove, Alabama, right outside of Birmingham. Of course, you all knew that, right? And they'll be here. And um, a lot, Dave was active in the Reserve Sportsman's Association. There'll be some members of the shooting club here, plus his own church family. And I can guarantee you, as we speak, Dave is enjoying himself immensely. It gives me goosebumps just to think about it. Okay, also, uh, on the second Sunday in April, Brother Bruce will be teaching a Sunday school series entitled All In. It's written by Mark Batterson. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he is a best-selling author. And that will be starting at se uh, seven, 9.30 every morning. It will be a Sunday school hour for eight weeks. So make plans to join us for that. That'll be an interesting ser uh, series called All In. And uh, Nutrioso Bible Church's Easter service, of course, will be on Easter, <laughs> March the 4th at 11 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. Uh, no sunrise service, no breakfast, just great preaching by Pastor Tom and and probably, a, uh, I'm sorry, April 4th. Thank you, Linda. Linda is the watchdog over there. And uh, yeah, April the 4th. 
just great preaching by Tom. We won't have to worry about the sunrise or anything like that. Great, uh, great preaching and maybe a <clears throat> modest Mexican food buffet. Okay, so moving on. Uh, the first Tuesday in April, which is the 6th. Oh, I forgot. Let's back up. Uh, for those of you that wish to attend, there is, a, there is an Easter sunrise service uh, in Round Valley at Becker Lake. Did I get that right? Okay. Uh, Nancy, uh, which is our uh, weather person, forecasts you want to be there at 645 <laughs> to get a good seat, right? 545. 545? Okay, great, Scott. All right. <laughs> Let's be there at 545 if you want a good seat at Becker Lake. And that's uh, a community, lots of churches participating in that. But we will have ours at 11 o'clock, right? Is that clear? Shake your head, Jess. It is. Okay. Um, and also, the first Tuesday in April which, according to Linda Martin, will be the 6th, right, Linda? <laughs> okay, we're going to have a Bible study here. And uh, it'll be at 2 o'clock uh, in the dining room. And uh, for those of you that want to come at 1, the sanctuary will be open for prayer and medication, I'm not medication, uh, meditation, <laughs> it's not going well this morning, I'm just getting my tongue wrapped around my, <laughs> okay, let's, let's try that again, <laughs> uh, Bible study at two, prayer and meditation at one, if, <laughs> If you so desire. Okay, moving right along. It's good that we can laugh about this. Okay. We're going to prayer requests. They're already there. Okay. Um, and I wanted to read you some excerpts here in a minute. Randy and Rhonda Elliott are missionaries uh, at the Avapai County Jail in Camp Verde, the main jail. Uh, are still down about $200 a month in support. I talked to him on the phone two days ago, um, and uh, he is just having a ball. The uh, jail has welcomed him back with open arms, and I wanted to read an excerpt from his Salt and Light. If you don't get Salt and Light, man, it's, got, it's packed full of information. And he said here, after leaving one of the lockdown dorms on Monday morning, and we talked about what a lockdown dorm was. They can't come out. They just have to open the bean chute and talk. That's all they can do. He said, after leaving one of the lockdown dorms on Monday morning to the loud shouting of God bless you, Pastor Randy, and it was the entire dorm that was yelling that, uh, an officer said to, to me with a smile, they sure get fired up when they see you, chaplain. And Randy answered that, it is Christ in me, my friends. Only he could give me such loving compassion for such a messed up bunch of people. <laughs> and so he just, he just bonds with them. Uh, our other missionaries, Tom and Laura Requat in Mali, West Africa, they are down about $160 a month in monthly support. So those are two huge prayer requests for the, for the Elliots to get their support back, $200, and the Requats. And I have to share this with you from the Requats. Uh, Laura teaches um, scripture memorization to the young people during their Bible club. Listen to the statistics. I had to read this twice. Tom writes, in the Bible Club, here are some numbers for the children who have learned verses and how many they have learned in the past six and a half months. 
So get this, in six and a half months, 220 children have learned their very first verse, which is John 1, 29, okay? 220 children. And you're thinking, oh, okay, well, anyone can learn one verse. Listen to this. Ten have learned an additional 400 verses. I couldn't, I couldn't memorize 400 verses if I had to. But it gets better. Two children have learned... 1,300 verses each. I'm not done. The last one, one of their Bible club children has learned 1,500 verses. Man. So, when you support Tom and Laura, this is part of what's going on at the other end of the dollar bill, isn't it? What a praise. Okay, um, also a prayer request. I can see the smoke coming off of Nancy's pen there. Safe passage for John and Kim as they drive to California uh, for the birth of their first grandchild, and they're leaving a week from tomorrow, right? Right, John? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, there's sort of an unspoken request for Charles's uh, sister, Eva, 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 am I? Eva, got it, in uh, a place in Texas. <laughs> I was going to try wax, walks, walks a hatch, hachi, hatchy. Okay, thank you. It's in Texas, find it on the map, trust me, okay? Uh, Anthony Dobson needs our prayers regarding some serious issues that he's currently dealing with. And, of course, Jeremy and Rachel Trujillo. Uh, housing for the two of them is a huge issue. Uh, Jeremy is better. His fever has broke, uh, but he's not out of the woods. So, any additional prayer requests? Hands. Jer uh, Jenny. There's a prayer request from Terry Shove, S-H-O-V-E, for her niece, Val. She's having a second spine surgery in four days, and that's today that the second surgery is happening. Wow. Okay. Did you get all that, Nancy? She got it. Of course she did. Thank you for sharing that, Jenny. Any other prayer requests? Okay. Pastor? Uh, Tom Dameron, we've been praying for him with Hodgkin's. He was telling me yesterday, when this first came up, I've known people with Hodgkin's. Sometimes it's not a good outcome. And he says that his outcome, the doctor says, is as good as it can be. He has to take every shot that he's taken again since childhood, since they've replaced his marrow. But he is doing great right now, and he wants to thank us for all of our prayers. Okay. And also Maddie, who um, we've been praying for, who had the very unique tumor that they didn't know how they were um, going to deal with it. That's right. We talked about it last week, but I want to reemphasize it. Not only has the tumor stopped growing, but it's actually begun to shrink a little bit. So the doctors are just amazed, and the family's rejoicing. Then that just give you goosebumps? God is at work. Any? Mary. I was very Johnson yesterday. She asked me to tell all of you that she loves you and she misses you. The praise is she has found a really good church and she feels so at home there and is busy all the time in that church. That is a praise. And uh, there's a chance we may see her, right, at Dave's memorial service. 
Okay. Wouldn't that be great if she made it down? Okay. Any other prayer requests? No? Okay. I'm going to read scripture from Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in transpasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, least anyone should boast. And here's the the relevant uh, verse for today. For we are all, uh, no, sorry. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Everyone stand and join me as we give praise to our precious Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, what an awesome day that you've created. Nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. No other doubt I know. Nothing but the blood of right now. For my part in this I see nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh precious is the blood
you work with us, Lord, to trust you in all things. We thank you for your love, Lord God. Hallelujah. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're good, good father. To you are, to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you. To I am. Who I am, who I am. Oh, I see many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Oh, you provide, cause you know just what we need before we Say a word, you're a good, good father, to you are, to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, oh, you are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Yes, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to So undeniable, I can hardly speak. He's so unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into love. Love, you're a good, good father. To you are, to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. To you are, to you are. To you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Ooh. Praise you, Father God. Praise you, Father God. Thank you so much, Lord God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your precious goodness. You may be seated at this time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Peg, and it is good to have the family back. Uh, we're going to take a time to pray. Do you believe prayer is effective? Is it important in the life of a believer? It is dramatically important. And sometimes when we pray, I don't know about you, but I've caught myself just looking for a shopping list. Supply this need, O oh Lord. Please give me. Please take care of. And that's great. That's part of what prayer is. However, that's not all the Bible says prayer should be. When we have a communication with God, we need to express a whole range of feelings and emotions 
And this will be the last week for a while that we do this, but I really want to encourage you in your prayer life that you use the term acts as a way to address God. Acts, A-C-T-S. It's how we act with an S towards God in our prayers. Who remembers what A means? A adoration. That's where we start. Before we come to God and say, I want, I want, I want, please, 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 we need to just sit down and think how great this God is that we worship. And so this morning, take just a moment before we continue in our worship and just speak to God and say, God, you are awesome, and here's the reason for me why you are awesome. Will you do that just for a moment, please? Before we go on to the next, I want you to ask yourself, is there anything that you could ever ask of a God that he's not? He's not missing anything. That's our adoration. But C, what does C stand for? Confession. Do you realize that sometimes our, our prayers are not as effective as they should be because we have sin in our life? We have bad attitudes, we have bad actions, some that we know about, some that are hidden sins. We need to take those out of the way before our prayers truly have power. So would you take just a moment and look back over the week and where you're at and say, Lord, here are things I want to confess. I want them out of my life. I want to tell you I know that they're wrong. And if there's something that I'm not aware of, make me aware. Now take just a moment and say, Lord, what sins are separating us in our relationship? And who remembers what T stands for? Thanksgiving, thankfulness. Do we ever tell God with a full heart, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the things I remember when I was a little kid. Thank you for what you're doing in my life now in so many ways. Take just a moment, if you would, and thank God for all that he has done and all he has meant to you. And S, this is what we're real good at, asking God to supply our every need, correct? We call that supplication. That's the 50-cent term. But it just means supply, Lord. We have a need that we believe that you only can su supply. The prayer requests that we talked about earlier, things in your own life, will you just bow before God and say, Lord, here are concerns I have. Here are needs. Please supply. Heavenly Father, as we continue in praise and worship this morning, I ask that you would open our eyes, open our ears, open our minds and our attitudes to hear the message that you have given John to give to us this morning. Bless him, Father. We don't want to hear what John has to say. We want to hear what you have to say through him. I thank you so much for John. I thank you, Father, for his love. I thank you, Father, for him, his being my brother and for being a fellow worker in the ministry here. We're going to miss him for the month or so that he's going to be gone. And we're going to miss Kim, too, and we're going to pray for her especially, that small trailer with John. <laughs> but we do love them both, and we treasure them, 
and we just give you glory and honor. Be with us this morning and worship me. You be glorified in all that is said, all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. I got a question for you. Is he a good father? He's such a good father. Thanks for that song. That was great. So, got this new microphone headset. Can you see it? It's like really small. It feels really weird. You know, a couple weeks ago, right in the middle of service, Tom's uh, microphone headset just took a dump. And uh, as everybody knows, we've been struggling with some new technology. And so we got this new one in this week. And I think it's really cool. I get to use it first so it's properly soiled for Tom next week. You know, I'm excited about that. Listen, guys, we got this team of folks back here y'all need to know about, okay? You know, Jenny and Stacy and Luke are working hard. They're putting in a lot of time and effort to get good at this, to make us good at it. And I want y'all to take the time to tell them how much you appreciate them. Um, and I would recommend you did it either after service or during the week because before service is a little rough. We got a lot going on back there, and so I'm asking you maybe to do it after service. But tell them, because they're working hard at it, okay? So today I want to talk to you about fulfilling God's purpose in your life. You know, God really does have a purpose for each one of us. And I think it's actually more of a mission. He's got a mission for each of us. Things that he wants us to accomplish while we're here on this earth. And I don't know about you, but I think it's pretty cool that the King of Kings thinks enough of us to include us in his plans. Isn't that cool? Let's start with some prayer. Thank you, God, today for the time we have in your house, and I pray that everything we do would work together to honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I believe, as I said, that God has a plan for us, and it is a mission, okay? And the question is, will we accept God's plan for our lives, and will we work to achieve it? In other words, will we accept the mission? Y'all remember that TV show a long time ago, Mission Impossible? Old Jim Phelps would get that cassette tape and pop it in there, and a voice would come on and say, your mission, should you choose to accept it? And then it would self-destruct. Yeah, that was so cool. Great show. Um, I never missed it. But today, what I'm going to show you is how you can make accomplishing God's plan for your life mission possible instead of mission impossible, because I think everybody in this room, I hope everybody in this room knows that nothing is impossible through God. There's four points I want to hit on today, and the first one is by far, hands down, easily the most important one, okay? In order to even have a chance to accomplish God's plan for you, you've got to have Jesus right here. He's got to be your Lord and Savior. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it before, but you can't accomplish God's plan for you without having Jesus right here. In fact, without him in your heart, the rest of today's talk matters not. It just doesn't make any difference. It's the single most important decision any of us will ever make in our lives. And if you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, I'm going to give you a chance to, to take that step in a few minutes. But don't worry, I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot. It's really between you and Jesus. Um, you see, once we accept Jesus, once he's in our hearts, we are no longer the same person. We're different. We're changed. As a matter of fact, we're brand new. Isn't that cool that in God's eyes we get to be brand new? And I can prove that in 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So check that verse for a second. I think it's really important to note. It says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. It doesn't matter what you've done, who you are, where you've been, what your background, your past, your lineage, none of that matters. If you're in Christ, you're new. Isn't that awesome? See, if we don't have Jesus, we're the same creature we've always been. And therefore, we have the same problems the rest of the world has. And we don't have a better solution than the rest of the world. See, in this world today, and probably always, there's just a lot of stuff out there that don't make any sense, isn't there? I mean, I, every time you pick up a newspaper, turn on the news, get on Facebook, or wake up, you know, there's just something that's like, wow, 
really? You know, that's the world we live in. There's a lot of things to be afraid of. There's a lot of things to uh, make you feel like there's no hope, to make you sad, angry, stressed out. But you see, the difference is for us, we've got Jesus. So you see, the whole equation changes for us. The whole deal's different. So the second point I want to take a look at as far as fulfilling God's plan in your life is that we've got to walk the walk. And what I mean by that is we've got to strive to be like Christ if we can achieve what he's designed us to achieve. So now, how do we do that? How do we walk the walk that God wants us to walk? Well, you know, to me, it's pretty simple to just say we've got to be closer to him, don't we? I mean, he's got to be a big part of our lives. In fact, he's got to be the focus of our lives. Every decision we make, everything we do, needs to be based on what God wants us to do. If we do that, then we're following his commandments. Like, for instance, praying. Pastor Tom's hitting on that right now, and I thought last week's message was powerful, didn't you think? It was just awesome. And when we pray, as he's indicated, we got to pray for forgiveness. We got to pray in thanksgiving. We got to pray for others. We got to ask God for what we need. And I think we got to ask him for what we want. And as we heard this morning, somebody was asking for wisdom. I just think that that's so smart. It's something that I forget. Maybe it's because I'm so wise to start with. But, you know, it's something that you need to ask for. When life's a struggle, when you don't have an answer, when you're worried, scared, man, isn't wisdom a gift? in those times in your life. And in James, it says, if we'll ask for it, we'll get it. So ask, ask for wisdom. You know, that quiet time you get, and I'm talking about just you and God, talking to him, but also listening to him. It's a critical step in accomplishing the mission that God has for your life. If we're going to walk the walk, we've got to have a robust prayer life. Another thing we've got to do is be in his word every day. And I'm not talking about that deal where you get up in the morning, you got to go to work, and you oh, you know, okay, I got to go. I'm saying study it, take time, get to know it, be in it. Don't just blow through it. How does every verse, every passage, every chapter, every book apply to your life? And then actually apply it, take it out with you, and put it to work. That's what being in God's Word is all about. You got to use it to make your life better and to draw you closer to him. If we can do that, it's a, it's a critical step towards accomplishing whatever God has planned for us. You know, the Bible, I've said this, I think I said it in a, a devotional a couple weeks ago, it truly is our owner's manual. All the answers are in it, everything you need. If you'll just spend the time in there to find it, look for that wisdom. If you're going to walk the walk, you got to trust him, Right? you got to have faith in him and in his word and in his plan, and that can be hard. Some days it's hard to see God's plan for you, isn't it? I mean, when things are just weird and you're just like, really, that's part of the plan? Why would that be, you know? But he actually takes the time to show us exactly how to walk the walk God's way in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Real straightforward. For we walk by faith, not by sight. So he tells us exactly how to do it. You know, in Christianity, with everything that God's promised us, everything he can do for us, everything he can do through us, it's all based on faith. It's all about faith. You've got to believe if you're going to ever accomplish the goal that God has for you. So when I, I'm going to boil that kind of down, but to walk the walk, it means to follow his commandments because that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to pray. He wants us to have faith. He wants us in his, in his word. Uh, 1 John 2, 3 through 6 says, Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought also to walk just as he walked. Right? You know, I went back in my Bible when I was putting this together, and I underlined that part in verse 5. It says, but whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. Now think about that. Is that powerful? That's a powerful little chunk of Scripture. 
I'm going to tell you kind of how it plays out in my life, and I think it can for anybody. I'll tell you something that you don't know about me. She doesn't even know. I'm stubborn. I'm impatient. I am an, an impatient fella. I know people who know me well are like, what? You know, but I'm, I am. I'm impatient. But here's what I found. Those weaknesses we got, when we're closer to God, when we obey Him and trust Him and we're in His Word and we've got a great prayer life, we get better in those areas because His strength is, is there for us. I wouldn't say I'm patient, but I'm better when I'm closer to Him than when I'm not. There's no doubt about that, you know? If we're going to fulfill His plan for our lives, if we're going to accomplish the mission, we got to walk the walk, right? The third point I have for you today is we've got to understand and believe. And I'm going to go back to the faith thing because it really is about faith, right? You got to believe God really does have a plan just for you. Um, a plan that's unique for you. A plan that's unique for me. You know, here's the thing. God has a plan that is tailor-made perfect just for Charles. He's got the perfect one. He's got the perfect plan just for Gary. He does. I'm going to tell you something. God has a plan that's so unique, so special, so powerful, so enormous for Luke that if he knew what it was, it would blow his mind. We can't, we can't keep up with God. We can't imagine like he can imagine. God's plan for you is bigger than you could ever imagine, ever guess, ever dream. His plan for me is bigger than I could ever anticipate. We cannot comprehend what he can do for us. We cannot comprehend what he can do through us. It requires faith. If you're going to accomplish the mission, you've got to have faith. In fact, if you don't believe in the mission, how can you accomplish it at all? You can't. But you see, I've got some good news for you. Aren't you glad? You can believe God has a plan for you because it's biblical. You heard the scripture that Linda read for us today, and I'm going to go back to verse 10. That's Ephesians 2.10. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So you see, what Paul's telling us in that verse really is that God figured out your role and my role in the mission before he ever created the world. Now, how did I come up with that deal in this twisted mind, right? Well, the King James Version of the dictionary says that the word beforehand means at first, before anything is done. So he knew exactly what your role was and what my role is in the mission before he ever got started on any of it. Let me show you. I'm going to connect the dots for you. The very first verse in the Bible, Genesis 1-1, what's it say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Now, if the Bible says that God prepared our mission beforehand, and the definition of the word beforehand is before anything was done, that means he planned your role in the mission before he created the heavens and earth. That's how I connected the dots. I think that's crazy. I think that's nuts to think how he could see that much that far ahead and how we're that special to him that he would do that for us. It takes faith to complete God's mission for you. The fourth point, how do we know what our personal role is? Well, I think there's kind of two parts of that. I think the first one is, I'm going to go back again to Ephesians 2.10, where Paul says that we are created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works. We are all called to do good works. In fact, that's one of the main objectives of God's mission for mankind, is to do good works. So now, how do we kind of hone in a little bit to the individual part of it. we got to use the tools that God's given us. You know, I mean, each person's mission is different, and therefore each person has their own set of talents, their own set of tools. You know, Kim and I were blessed with two great kids, and our daughter, Mandy, is really cool. I mean, she's just a dynamic person. She's smart, she's talented, she's creative. She's got a big heart. Um, I remember when she was just a little thing, and she was just really cute. And I know you're looking at me, and you think, well, of course she was cute, you know. I used to tell her all the time that God gives us each a bucket of tools that we get to take around in life to help us get through life 
and help us help other people and help us share Jesus with other people. And I used to tell her, you know, you you got the biggest bucket of tools. You really do. And I believe she does. But I believe we all have our own unique bucket of tools. You know what I mean? I mean, yours is different than mine, and mine's different than yours. See, not everybody is meant to stand up here in front of people and talk. And I'm probably living proof of that. You're probably thinking, yeah, John, you're right about that one. Not everybody is meant to sing in front of other people or to pastor a church or to write a book about Christianity. We're all different, right? I mean, maybe you're good looking, like me. Or maybe you're better looking, like Skip. Maybe you can sing like an angel, like Peg, or play a piano like nobody's business, like Mary. Maybe you're a great speaker, like Tom. Maybe you're funny. Maybe you're smart. Maybe you're fast. Maybe you're tall. Maybe you got long hair. Maybe you like to fish like me, or you own a camper. Maybe you love Mexican food. I know of at least two people in here that do. <laughs> maybe you think pine trees smell good, or maybe you enjoy rock hounding like my wife. Maybe you got bunions like me. Maybe you don't get that whole math thing. Maybe it doesn't make any sense to you. Maybe you got big ears or you're double jointed. The point is, those personal traits, you have to look at them as tools. And the reason why is because there's other people out there with the same traits. And those common, that common ground you have with people, it'll open doors. It'll allow you to build a relationship with somebody. It'll allow you to reach Christ, reach people for Christ. It'll allow you to help them shape and change their futures and help give them hope. You know, everybody needs hope. They need the hope that we've got tucked inside of us, and we don't always show it or, or share it. It's the hope that God gave us, right? Jeremiah 29, 11, you guys know this one. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And I love how Billy Graham put it. He said, for the believer, there is hope beyond the grave because Jesus Christ has opened the door to heaven for us by his death and resurrection. I think that's awesome. We got to give people the hope that Jesus gives us. It's critical to the mission because you see, at the end of the day, the real mission is to change the populations of heaven and hell. That's what it's all about. The real mission is to bring people to the cross, it's to bring people home, it's to bring people to Jesus. That's why we're here. That is the mission. So, do you choose to accept it? Do we, as the body of Christ, choose to accept that mission? Will we make Jesus available to the people in our lives, the people we love, the people we know, the people we don't know, everybody we, we see? It is our God-given mission. So if you bow your heads with me a minute, that'd be great. You know, I mentioned a little bit ago that if you don't have that relationship with Jesus, if you don't have him in your heart, if he's not your, the Lord over your life, that I was going to give you a, a chance to take that step. And, and again, I'm not going to embarrass anybody. It's, it's between you and Jesus. It's really simple. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. It's that simple. You know, just talk to God right now. Say, Father, I may not understand this whole deal, but I can see Jesus in other people's lives, and I want that too. Please come into my heart. Forgive me for the things I've done wrong. Be my Lord and Savior. Make me whole. Make me brand new. I believe you, the Son of God. I believe you died and rose again for me. Father, I want to thank you for the folks who have made that commitment today, and I want you to show them that you're there. Let them feel your presence. Let them feel your love, and for the rest of us, for all of us, as we go through our week and we go through our life, I pray that you'd give us the strength and the vision to see the mission at hand and to accomplish it as you would have us do. I pray that in Jesus' name. If you've made that commitment today, if you've taken that step, I haven't talked to him about it, but I'm sure Tom stands with me. We want to help. All you got to do is reach out. 
I'd say welcome to the family and let us know what we can do to help you, to help develop the new you. You know, Jesus said in Luke 15, 10, I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Is that great or what? Amen. Y'all have a blessed week. We love you. Peg's going to take us out with a little music. are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity will one day be restored. And though no, we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, the love other we will walk hand in hand we will walk with each other we will walk hand in hand and together we'll spread the news that god is in our land although we are christians by our love by our love yes although we are christians by our love we will work with each other we will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And although we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, though we are Christians by our You can put your hands together. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is what I call. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is what I call. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. I'll praise you, Lord God, from whom all blessings flow. Have a blessed day in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.